Joining me now, former Republican Congresswoman from California, Mimi Waters, Walters, and Mark Daniels, Sheriff of Cochise County in Arizona, which is on the border. Thank you very much for coming on to both of you. Um, all right, Mimi, is this situation politically as dire as I'm laying out, or am I overstating this? Well, first of all, I, I share your frustration um, with those on the right and those on the left that refuse to compromise. Um, but I do believe that if the Senate does come to a compromise on the border, as well as being able to support giving Ukraine money, that the House will come around. And this is why I say that. You do have an element on the far right that's no matter what, they are not going to support any sort of compromise on the border because they basically want it closed. And on the left, they don't want the, any sort of changes on the border. But I think the White House will be able to put pressure on those Democrats in order to get a compromise done. Because remember, the president is not seen in a very good light on the world stage. His foreign policies have been a disaster. And he needs to show the rest of the world that he can help Ukraine and Israel. Yeah, I, I believe that, but I'm not sure that the, some of the House Democrats are going to help him in that effort. Let me move from the political uh, a moment to the practical and ask uh, the sheriff about this. All right, so sheriff, uh, I'm not going to ask you to get into the politics of this, but just lay out the practicalities for me. You know, we need something, right? I mean, you're there on the border. If it's a compromise bill, that's better than nothing, I would assume, right? I would agree with you, Dan. As you, as you just stated, we're living the frustration every day. And as part of national sheriffs, we have reached out to Congress. We have reached out to the White House. We have worked with our uh, border governors because what we see in Cochise County is an erosion of our quality of life. As we watch Washington, D.C. play political safety instead of public safety and bury border security in the middle of all that for immigration, we're suffering every day. In the last two years, to give you an idea, we've had over 400 people booked in my jail just for fair to yield smuggling attempts. We had over 553 people booked for smuggling charges and, and uh, under state violations in 14 months. It's cost my county $8.6 million for border crimes in Cochise County. We're a rural county here on the southeast corner of the state of Arizona. We're living it every day. Double-digit deaths in my county related to the border. That's the ones that come through crime, not just people, migrants dying on the border, the inhumane side of, inhumane side of it. My point on this is it's not working. We know it's not working. But what I see every day is Congress, the White House, playing the blame game while we play the real game. So, and again, to be clear... You would encourage Congress and the White House to come up with some sort of deal, right? Meaning, if they can come up with anything that's progress from your perspective, that's a good thing, right? Regardless of the details. Exactly, Dan, because that's something we've been asking for for three years, right. is engage it, recognize it, work together. So, so, but Mimi, I know you're, you're, you're more optimistic, I think, than I am uh, about this, the notion that if the White House and the Senate Republicans are able to reach an agreement, you know, how how are they going to get it? I just think you're going to have people on the far left in Congress who are going to say no. You're going to have a lot of House Republicans who are going to say no. And it's going to be tough. Well, you just have to get to 218. Yeah. And if you get enough Republicans, which I do believe there are enough more pragmatic Republicans, if you will, in the conference that will, will say, listen, We've got to get something done here. We've been, you know, talking about this ever since Biden got elected. You know, he has done nothing to uh, secure our borders. And they have to go back and show their constituents that they fought for something. And, you know, but they can't I give Biden credit. The pro I, I worry that their problem is, and particularly on the extreme, if there is a compromise, they'll say, oh, this was a win for Biden, right? It's all about winning and losing. It's not about solving our problems. It's about who wins and who loses. And I worry that the, particularly on the right, there's going to be the sense of, oh, well, we can't let Biden get a, quote, win here, even though from the left's perspective, it was a big loss. Well, it's all about the messaging, right? It's how you're going to go out and message that. Yeah. And by the way, those on the far right... They're, they're never going to support any sort of 
um, compromise when it comes to the border. They're just not going right. to do it. Right. And so we're going to have to look to see those members that, and some of them, quite frankly, we have quite a few members that are in swing seats. I mean, there's probably 17 or 18 of them right there <sighs> yeah. that Biden won their districts. And they have to um, compromise more in order to be able to be reelected. Uh, so we'll see how well Mike yeah. Johnson does. If, if the Senate comes to a compromise, this will be a true test of Speaker Johnson to see if he can put a coalition together to get um, a bill passed. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.